Once again, remember, subscribe, and I'm delighted to be joined by former cruiserweight champion of the world, Mr. Glenn McCorry. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Um, I'm, uh, well, as good as you can be in these in these terrible times, but um, hanging in there, mate, hanging in there. Ha Happy New Year, I must Happy say. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. I yeah. wish the New Year would get kicked off. It's awful, isn't it, when it starts off in... The, for the likes of us, the first news you hear is all the boxing shows are cancelled in January by the British Boxing Board of Control. It's the, the worst possible start, isn't it? Definitely. But some would say, for the longer term, good. Why not, you know, why not get this out of the way, get the virus under control, and then you'll have a, a good summer and then the end of the rest of the year? Well, I'll, I'll be happy tonight. My mum gets her second... A second vaccination. Um, I've seen my mom about once, about once in the last six months or something. So my mom's because she's she's scared to death. So um, I see her. So she gets a second vaccination tonight. So so that's something to look forward to seeing mom again. Hey. Do you know what? Like I know they say you, you're you're never too old to think there's not a Santa Claus, but over Christmas. You know, I don't know if you were by the chimney at the time, but Roy Jones called you out and thought, you must have thought, hey, it is true. Santa does exist. And Roy <laughs> Jones, I accept your challenge. Let's get it done. It was, it was amazing. It was, it, you know, it's all come, it's all come, you know, quite a bit of a shock because certainly a comeback was not, <laughs> was not in, in my mind whatsoever. I was, however, I was interested um, and I was impressed by the Mike Tyson Roy Jones fight. The, you know, and sitting there, I was, you know, it was great to work with BT and do that, do that show live. But then to think a few weeks later, <laughs> <laughs> that could be you. You could well, be next in the radar. <laughs> you're, you're right. Santa does exist. Santa does exist. So. Obviously, you, you were you were covering the fight between Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. What did you make of the whole spectacle? I thought it was good. I thought it was um, surprisingly so because you, you you know obviously when as we're moving to older age, you know you you kind of wonder what what's left what's left in the tank. But um, I I was impressed. I mean, I thought Tyson, I thought Mike still looked. Dangerous. Um, Roy still had some great skills and needed all of them skills to just to nullify Mike's attacks, just to try and keep Mike at bay. He had to use everything he possibly could. So um, all in all, I thought it was um, it was a good night. And do you know what? It's you can't get away from them. Them, you know, they're superstars. They're great, great names of boxing. So to see them get themselves in shape and put on a performance. Joe, it, it really give me a give me a, a great boost. What did you make of the outcome, which was a draw? And many people out there said that Tyson won that fight. Yeah, I thought Tyson won that fight, but I think Jones did. He did his utmost not to make him fight, didn't he? he did his utmost to try and to try and stop Tyson getting his shots off, and he did that. He did that well. Um, but it, you know, it, it was something. It was something new, wasn't it? I, so I, I don't know, you know, I don't know whether that was the politics of making a draw. As we're going to see more and more, I'm sure that people will be looking for the victory because I mean, it doesn't matter what, what age you are, a win's still a win. And, you know, we're all competitive. We all want to get that win. Mm. Well, now it's confirmed you are fighting Roy Jones Jr. But you saw him in action against Tyson. And from a boxing perspective, 
What have you picked up from your future opponent? Well, it's obviously going to be a very different kind of fight because you know I don't fight like I don't fight like Mike Tyson. And um, my first thing is trying to remember how I did fight. That's my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my first thing. Do you know? But um, obviously, I, I box it. I like it at long range, and you know, it was good to see Mike getting through with his jab because you know my jab is 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 very good. Um, and you know it's been nice. It's been nice just to get back in the gym and have this on my mind because you know, like we talked about earlier on, it it's been tough for everybody this this year. And for me, you know, I've had I've suffered with um, mental health problems for a long time. Lost my brother, my best friend, my nephew, all in a short period of time. And and it was um and it's been very tough. So um to have something to look forward to, to have something to give you a glimmer of of light in these times is um is great to get back in the gym because i've been in the gym you know I've, I've trained numerous fighters over the years but to get in the in the gym for me for the first time in 27 years was amazing it was all of a sudden you know my son's in the gym and you know he never even saw me fight he's 30 years of age and and he's he's training me putting me through my paces and it was just wonderful. It was just wonderful to think. And he's going like, Dad, you're looking good, Dad. You're looking good. And that, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Mm. You talked about depression, obviously, from bad news within the family. I mean, was that alcohol that you kind of turned to? And I mean, what were some of the, you know, the, the low points for you? I think, you know, when you're young and you've gone through, you go through, pain, you know, mental, mental pain and darkness. I think the first thing you do is you kind of pep yourself up thinking, you know, I'm just going to have a drink. And, and, and that's what you, and that's what you turn to. And when you're young, it, it, it's kind of classed as fun. You know, it's kind of, oh, you know, it's, it's people, people, um, you know, people laugh and think, oh, he's having a good time and this sort of stuff. As you get older, it's just, you're just trying to hide. You're just trying to numb the pain. and and for me, that was that was my that was my sort of way out, um, just trying to numb the pain. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't work, and the pain doesn't go away, and the pain just magnifies. You know, it just gets it just gets worse. So, um, so I think you've got to. You know, I keep trying to find ways of challenging myself and putting myself in danger. And people would people would say, you know, Glenn Glenn's got his finger on the self destruct button. And I think for a lot of years, that is very much that has been very much the case. So um, I'm hoping that you know, last year I climbed the eighth highest mountain in the world, which was another ridiculous thing that that I put down to, <laughs> to myself. Um, and that was really dangerous. I watched the lady die at camp four. I watched her die right in front of me. She just she just she just toppled over, oxygen on, and everything, and just and died. I saw you know grown men crying as they fell in crevasses and that sort of stuff so um so getting in the ring and doing something that i love you know it's like you getting up in the morning and, and talking to people and talking about boxing and talking about the sport you know that's what keeps you going isn't it that's 100 and um and that 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 was kind of took away from me a little bit and um so it's good it's good to be back it's good to think there's 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 a purpose to get up in the morning mm -hmm. we've seen tyson fury talk about you know, how, you know, the, the gym is his medicine, you know. Yeah. Is that Glenn McCrory's medicine also as well for mental health? I never, the thing is, I never thought it was. I never thought it was because I, I, I kept out the gym purposely because my career was was cut short. I retired um, very young. I never, I never reached my potential because I was so badly mismanaged and so badly ripped off. Um, and, you know, when you win the world title and you sign off the dole in the ring, winning the world title that's 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 pretty bad you know that's a pretty that's a pretty sad state of of, of affairs and that's what it was like so so i kind of hated the game so i never got any salvation in the gym you know other than helping other people but um so many years later it, it, all the memories the business memories and getting ripped off and having no money and fighting for nothing that's kind of subsided now that's kind of good that pain's gone away so it's um it's a it, it's joy you know it's it's good 
it's good to be back in the gym and it's good to be training myself and it's good to be trying to get fit and just to be working, just to be, you know, the other night I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep because I was thinking about, I was thinking about boxing. The, the adrenaline, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're kid, and you're thinking about yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah. And, you know, you can't get to sleep. And that's what I was like when I was thinking about boxing. When, when I, you know, I couldn't, I was so excited about sparring the next day, what I'll be like at the gym or what I was going to try. I couldn't get to sleep. And I was like that. <laughs> I was thinking, go to sleep, Glenn. You know, you're too old for this. <laughs> what yeah. were some of the, Obviously, look, you know, you retired quite young, you know, even though you won a world title. What are some of the bad things that you've had to experience from the business side of things without obviously saying any names? Do you know, the, the worst thing was the, 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 thing I, the thing I valued the most, the thing I cherished the most was, was winning a world title because growing up, I'm the only from this area, from, the, from Newcastle, Gateshead, you know, from that area, I'm the only world champion ever. And as a kid growing up, all I got told of everybody, even my own dad, was every time you know I said I was going to be champion of the world, you know, I'm going to be like my hero, Muhammad Ali. Everybody would say, you know, stop dreaming, stop. You, you can't, you know, you can't be like that. So when I got the world title, that was an amazing, you know, against all the odds, that that was amazing. And then to have that sort of taken off me. Because they brought the they brought the fight. You know, I was the champion. They brought the fight forward. I went for negotiations in America, and you know they kept me up all night trying to. You know, this was my own manager, kept me up all night trying to you know get my money down to nothing, and 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 then they brought the the fight forward against Jeff Lampkin, and I said I, my manager phoned me up and said we've got the Jeff Lampkin's fighting in March, and I said I can't make the weight then. You know, I need time to make the weight because I didn't have a nutrition. I didn't even have a proper trainer. I just had an assistant amateur coach. So it was um, it was difficult. And I knew what they were doing. I knew they were taking my title away from me. And then, but after that, that was bad enough. That was that was horrendous. You know, I I, I went in that fight. I got caught with a body shot. I'd never been hurt off my hurt off my Tyson with a body shot. Nobody could hurt me with a body shot. But I was so weakened. That was so bad. That was that was. That was devastating. That was my whole life taken away from me. And then I didn't get my purse either. That was taken away from me as well. So um, so I, I retired 25 and then I got a big tax bill and I had to come back and play Lennox. But you know, that was me 25 years of age, out of love with the sport, totally let down, everything taken off me, even my cherished world title. Mm. Well, what's some of the advice that you'd give to younger fighters trying to make their mark in the game in terms of the business side, obviously, look, anyone can train and live that, you know, live that life in the gym. But the business side as well has to co coincide with that. I think you know you have to be you have to be very savvy. You have to be savvy of, and you have to ask people because you know when you when you're with when you're with them um, people that are. Are not the best people. They keep you away from everybody. They don't want you because knowledge is a dangerous thing. And if you know what other people are getting paid, if you know, you know, what the preparation is like, what, what training costs, and all of that sort of stuff, you know, that's then then it's dangerous. You know, if you, if the people if somebody's disreputable, so um, I think it's um, it's very important to know exactly. What you're doing it's very important to talk to people get as much knowledge as you can about your business because at the end of the day it's short it's a short career and you've only got one chance so you've got to make as much as you possibly can in that short career mm. i did see floyd mayweather say at the end of last last year before the tank davis fight against leo santa cruz he said look we need to clean up the sport of boxing Mm. And I think he was saying that there was too many belts, you know, there's too many things holding up, you know, good fights, you know, there's mm. too many politics going on behind the scenes. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's an argument for, for the belts and for championships and, and that because, you know, it would be nice. And it w in the old days, when, when you had one belt and it was one champion, um, you know, that's great until the mafia are controlling that belt. And then mm -hmm. it's not so great. And, you know, that's what happened in, in, in America um, in the 50s and 60s and that sort of thing. You know, so there's a lot of corruption in life. And, you know, 
I think the more people out there, and we don't want a, a massive amount of different um, world bodies, but you've got to have a bit of competition. Otherwise, a lot of people are not going to get their chance because you see, you know, you see the managers um, who are in, who are, who are name managers and, you know, they've got power in the game and they've got TV. Their boys, their fighters get fights. You know, they can get knocked out. They can get beaten, 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 still get the big fights. And you've got kids who are unbeaten, you know, and they're in Sheffield and they, ha they haven't got the right, you know, they, are, they have got a perfectly good manager, but they haven't got the TV deal. And they're not going to get it. They're not going to get a chance. Do you know, so it's, it's, it's still the same. It's, it's who you know. It's all about connections. And that's, that's the business. You know, you have to, I wasn't connected, you know, and I had to end up getting an American promoter to get a chance, you know, I was an undefeated British and Commonwealth champion. You know, and I, it was only because I, I, I sparred with Mike Tyson and I got press in America when I blacked his eye that got, that, that's what got me the recognition. You know, I was never going to get it from, from the UK. I was never going to, you know, because I wasn't, I wasn't in the right camp. You say that you black Mike Tyson's eye. I did see someone in social media that you said, look, <laughs> Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, disclaimer, bruised it. Um, I did see that you said, look, after Roy Jones Jr., gladly, Mike Tyson, you can have it. Do you know what? I absolutely, I loved my time in Team Tyson. It was an absolute privilege, you know, to have the T-shirt. It was it was very very tough, it, you know. Mike Tyson around the Larry Holmes, um, that those um, those sort of that time was his was his best time, you know. Mike Spinks and all that sort of stuff. Um, he was really really you know, just a fearsome fearsome fighter. So to be there was great. I did well, you know. And it's it's you know that's not just me blowing my trumpet or anything. It's it it's on video. It's all out there to see and people would say wow you know you did well yes he had other sparring partners he might have had Oliver McCall getting in the ring after me and then James Tillis but um you know I still I still I still hung in there with him and, and you know he'll tell you himself I you know I got his respect um so to share the ring with Mike for real would be would be amazing and especially of A2s <laughs> because that would be even better because the thing about Mike in his heyday was, you know, you could have a, a good spell in the fight, but sooner or later he was going to get you, and um, and he did. You know, around that time he was he was he was unbeatable at that at that point. So the plan for twenty twenty one is, you know, hopefully get a, a victory over Roy Jones Jr. and then you know I am Mike himself. Just, just to share the ring, just to share the ring with Roy Jones would be amazing. Obviously, if I'm in there, I'm going to go and try and win. I'm going to, I want to be the best I possibly can. But just to get in the ring with arguably the greatest fighter of all time would be, would be great. And for it to come at this age, at this time in my life, it really would be Christmas all over again. Yeah, well, they do say that, look, believe in Santa, he's real. And um, the fight with Roy Jones Jr., when are we expecting that fight? Are we expecting it I think May. spring? May, I think May. I think due to, due to what's just happened recently, um, they were, I think they were talking about a little bit earlier, but now I'm, I'm here in the beginning of May before you know, we need to get COVID out the way a little bit and make sure, you know, because ideally... We want people to enjoy that. We want it to be a, an entertainment. We want people to come and be, be, be ringside and say, you know, they saw, they saw Roy Jones and they saw Glenn McCrory. And, you know, there's a whole generation that think I'm a commentator that don't even realize that I, I, I had a career before that um, as, a, as a world champion. So um, it'd be nice, be, nice to, be nice to be a big entertainment um, spectacle. Are we expecting the fight to happen in the UK or in the States? Or does it depend where, on um, COVID restrictions? Where do you think? <laughs> Roy, Jones yeah, yeah. Has got to come to, Roy Jones has got to come to Geordie land, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need thousands of people to help me. 
you know, it's, it's a crowd is so important because uh, on the 3rd of June, 1989, if it hadn't have been for that fight being in the Northeast with, you know, it was 300 yards away from my home. I walked up the street that night with my bag over my shoulder to masses of, to masses of people. And they, they got me through that. They were as much, as much part of that victory as I was. So it would be great. It would be great to be there with a crowd and to entertain one more time. One more time. Once a fighter, always a fighter. That's what they say. Always a fighter. Glenn, yeah. it's been a pleasure.